British fans saw the Audi Quattro for the first time last November. The car's back again for a full season of British rallying with Hannu Mikola in control. The four-wheel drive machine arrives in relaxed style and after only five stages, the Pirelli Shod Quattro has taken an immediate lead. Mikola's over half a minute ahead of his nearest rival. Mikola's win is assured. Mikola is the master. With his co-driver Arnie Hertz, the world champion has taken one of the most satisfying and well-deserved wins of his long and distinguished career. Hannah Mikola, the last one in 1972. This is his second minute. I'm fortunate enough to be at the Goodwood Festival of Speed and I'm unfortunate enough to be in an unfamiliar position of being the interviewer rather than the interviewee. But on this occasion, here at Goodwood with Yuha and Vesa Mikola, whose very famous father, Hanu, graced these stages here and demonstrated many times his prowess in driving, but also in some very special equipment that all of you listening and seeing this will remember very well. This is an informal chat that we wanted to put together. The background of this is that Yuha and Vesa have been driving up the hill at Goodwood um, in a car that was very special both to Audi and I think to you guys. How special was it this weekend to drive chassis six, I think, is it, is it number yeah, six? Or six, six out there going up the hill? I mean, it's been amazing. Like we still have one more run to go. So it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't want the weekend to end. But I, I think for us, like ever since started talking to Timo and Audi Tradition about potentially doing this. We're just like, wow, if it's going to happen, it's going to be really, really special. Right. And um, for us, having come here before and known what Goodwood is all about, like just made it even better. We've had a couple moments together, like in the car, where you really feel the emotion and you feel the the history, you know, of the car. And then you start remembering dad and thinking about what it was like for him, like in Portugal and that first rally going out there and being like, this is this huge risk I took and like maybe this is gonna work you know and like the emotions like must have been pretty special you know as you kind of saw that click together and just to be able to relive a little bit of that is is great and have a little like step into that world and see how much it still means to people it's, it's so special for us uh, you know we, I feel very honored that they're letting me drive this car I mean it's a very historically significant car you know and and, and, and Timo and the Audi Tradition team have really you know been great supporters of us and, and with the milestone 40 years it's yeah. it's fantastic and then there's also the Safari winning car here so just to have two kind of in the paddock here and and uh, of course Stig's here also yeah, as you Stig's said here. earlier yeah, yeah absolutely and, and you know we've been talking to him and kind of you know asking him about some of the stories bit. and stuff like that so it's it's you know kind of speaking about earlier when we were uh, talking about you know did it feel normal or, or was he just dad I think one of you know we were here probably you know 2010 or something like that and, and you know the late Ken Block was walking around and you know he had a huge entourage and you know we were with our wives and and uh, and, and, and our dad and mom and then he you know Ken comes over and, and you know wants to shake his hand and said oh I'm such a huge fan it was just like wow like that's kind of you know one of those moments you're like wow the, this, this is super transcends cool. you know ages and everything yeah, exactly, else I mean yeah. it's so iconic yeah. in every single way both the yeah. car and, and Hanu you know yeah. and, um, and I always remember actually there was a similar moment at Race of Champions and we saw Seb Vettel last night and I reminded him of this because we saw him at Race of Champions in Miami Oh yes. and uh, Hanu and I went up to, to say hi to Seb and we're like oh can we grab a picture with you and he's like no no can I get a picture with a real race car driver at talking about my dad and I just told him about that last time I'm like you probably don't remember this and before I could finish the sentence he finished the sentence yeah. for me because he remembered that moment and he's like I'd just been on YouTube watching some of the old Quattro highlights a couple of days ago before he got here. So, yeah. so it's really special. I mean, yeah. that kind of things when you hear it from a four time, you know, F1 world champion is pretty, yeah. pretty impressive. And yeah. it's, it's really cool and special and makes me so proud of what he accomplished. Uh, very honored and, and, and uh, pumped to be here. We're, we're driving the 1980 uh, Quattro, first Quattro rally car, really. It was the, uh, the course car, the zero car in the Portugal Algarve rally in 1980. So. This was, uh, you know, the year before they entered the World Championship, and, and our father Han was uh, was driving it with with Arne Hertz, and they were the the zero car as I mentioned. And had they been entered in the rally, I think they would have won by 24 minutes or something crazy like that. And and really, it kind of unleashed Quattro and, and Audi to the world. So it was really the start of of, uh, 
you know, fantastic era for, for Audi, but also for our father. Yeah, and I mean, just to add to that, 83 ended up being finally the year that Honda won the world championship. Really, this year is a celebration of that. It's 40 years to, since he, uh, he took the crown, and for us to be here to celebrate that and relive it uh, is am amazing. And Audi tradition supporting it with letting us driving this car up the hill is, is really special. So We all come here um, to Goodwood, and events like Goodwood, we, we certainly love to see the metal. We love to see the cars but we also love to hear about the people behind the cars because these things don't go anywhere without the people. Design them, build them, maintain them, but especially drive them. Um, and they capture all our imaginations, I think. So one of the things that intrigues me is, you know, growing up with somebody like your father, who is so special to so many of us, um, and he's up there on a pedestal. I mean, what was it like growing up with with Hanu and you know what are some of your earliest memories of your dad? Yeah I mean I when I think of the rally side of it um, one of the things was he had us pretty late so he was kind of in the tail end of his career in some ways um, especially the times that I can remember like he had the, one of the other cars that Audi Tradition brought is the Safari winner from 87 and at that time I was six so I remember that car a little but we were talking with Vesa like how much of it is actual memories and how much is that I've seen and read about the car so much and kind of known that it's his last win, you know, at the WRC level. And, but, but I think for us, he was dad, you know, and I think he really appreciated time away from rallying. I think he really used that to like recharge and, and be as good as he was out on the stages. And, and it, you know, when we talked about racing at, at home or whatever, it was many times as a fan, like we'd watch F1 together, you know, we'd be excited about different types of motorsport, but he never pushed us to race. You know, he always said, um, don't do this, like get a real job. You know, he's like, it's very, very hard to get to the very top. And so I think for us, he was, he was uh, dad. And I think the great thing was he really appreciated that family time. And as he wound down his career, you know, he went from traveling at the peak 300 days a year when I was really young and at the time, his dad would help take care of us and when he would come home I would be confused as a little kid to be like who is this you know like but but then he, he really went from that to a partial season to just really choosing what he wanted to do later on and and I think he really made up for it in the later years like he just wanted to be at home and spend time with us which was really special. Absolutely you know he, he was you know just dad to us and, and I, I remember I think my earliest memories, I was born in 83, so the year he won the championship, so I don't really have a recollection of kind of the Audi stuff, except maybe 87, where, you know, we'd get like postcards or something like that, and I remember having, you know, some of the cool 80s uh, Audi, like, sweatbands or, or that type of stuff, and playing them maybe with, with uh, as a kid, but but uh, obviously I, I was I was fortunate enough to drive a little bit myself, and, and uh, you know, obviously, like, so much respect for what he did and accomplished, but it was hard for me to listen to some of that advice because he was also, you know, dad. So. Parental advice yeah, exactly. is never very yeah, easy. Yeah. So there was kind yeah. of that dynamic. But I, I, I remember fairly early on, probably 93, when he did his last rally with Toyota in, in, in Rally Finland or Thousand Lakes, you know, having this sense of like, he's not really just a normal guy. You know, people are coming up to him and asking for autographs and stuff. And uh, uh, But he, he had a great, you know, ability to disconnect from that. And when he was at home, you know, he really was trying to find a place away from it, you know, and, and he wasn't a guy who, uh, or at least to us, lived at 365, where, you know, when he stopped, he really stepped away from the sport. And yeah, and, and we were very fortunate. I mean, he retired at 50 and, and, you know, a lot of kids don't get their fathers at that age, right? They're working, you know, for another 15 years maybe, and he was dad. So he, he kind of made up for that time that maybe we lost when he was driving, but, you know, with, with kind of a, a, a nice early retirement. Hanu Mikola's Audi Quattro won the first round of the championship, but the powerful turbocharged car is proving a bit of a handful on the slippery tarmac roads. But Mikola's Quattro, which is now suffering from a slipping clutch. Coca-Cola is poured onto the Quattro's clutch in an attempt to clear away the oil which is causing it to slip. Mikola is still struggling on, and while the car is quick on the stages, the driver is fighting a losing battle. Oil is still leaking onto the clutch, keeping the mechanics busy and giving team manager David Sutton more headaches. <laughs> What's that powder you're putting in there just now? Uh, flour. Well, that, is, that, is that the answer then? Is it? it's, it's worked perfectly on the last two or three special stages. Seems to have dry, dried the oil out of the out of the clutch I'll and. Take the front, John. Uh, we're I'll back give you the idea. Of that. We got it from um, an Irishman at the side of the road. 
I also remember 93. I think that was cool because we were old enough to kind of experience that. And, and he still had, with Uwe Anderson, you know, he was able to get a car that was a competitive car, but they were obviously testing a lot of things with it. And it was kind of like he was helping develop the car as well, which was really cool at the time. But just being at La Yavuare, like the, the hotel where Rally Finland was based and running around as a kid through the hallways and meeting the other rally drivers kids and there's a whole like little world to that that was really really interesting as a kid you know growing up in that element. Yeah and there was a strong Finnish connection to other Finnish yeah, drivers right. and their kids and that type of stuff and I, I remember my mom was very close with you know the other wives and, and children were a similar age and it was kind of you know everybody would go to the rallies or, or certain rallies I know Greece was one that yeah. all of the families came to so uh, obviously we were just kind of babies but but uh, it, it was very much like a community as well. Yeah and support community I presume for the non-driver family members yeah, yeah, because yeah. They, they they were all going through similar things but and also I don't know did you ever drive I, I did once yeah so yeah. so from a driver's perspective was it, it's special to us I think yeah but, you know the question is yeah. how these yeah I you? mean first of all it's such a unique event you know I, I mean it's nicknamed and finished the gravel Grand Prix you know because it, it's so fast so yeah. so I mean to go there and, and just my personal experience doing it in 2004 it was fantastic but I mean he won the event seven times you know tied for most times with with Marcus Grenholm and and uh, that's something that you know we're both immensely proud of, and, and uh, um, you know he was he was drove it from maybe the mid '60s to the mid '90s, you know. So he probably I, I think we have a plaque at home where it was like his 30th you know time doing Rally Finland, and, and, and to win it seven times, and to go through also the evolution of the sport. I, I mean I'm always kind of joking when initially started in the mid '60s uh, in Finland to get into the bar and stuff, you had to dress up with like a, a jacket and tie and they would go rally, like no helmets or anything, they would just hang the jacket in the back, <laughs> go rally, park the car, put on the jackets and go straight to the bar, you yeah. know, and that was kind of rallying in the 60s and then, you know, picked up in the 70s, obviously the escorts and then I guess Mercedes really being the first kind of right. big money factory team to come in and then Audi after that and, and then just, you know, taking off and becoming a real professional sport. Now Hanu Mikola gives us a demonstration of just why this is true to an accompaniment of bouncing stones. And he tells us how he does it. To second gear, to third, and now I'm waiting left hand corner, not so bad, going 100 kilometers an hour, next left, going full, then I'm waiting jump. Here it's coming. Fourth gear. Now it's long, long. Right hand corner. Must take a little easier. So. And now very bad, very bad left. Very bad left. And then chasing again. Third gear. And uh, left hand. Pull. You know, when I look at his career as well, there's not too many of those type of uh, people who have been able to keep at it for such a long time and, and also be competitive. And, um, you know, speaking of other Finnish drivers, he was like, I, I started, you know, racing against the fathers and then I stopped racing against the sons, you know, and that, that's how long he was in the sport, which is pretty, pretty amazing. So it does sound, though, like you, you said he didn't try and push you into the sport, and etc., and he separated everything. You have some memories of things he probably told you about mm. about the rallying days so did that happen later in life uh, with yeah him? and i i mean i i geek out on the sport and, and especially Sorry, the yeah. history so i was always asking him questions of you know what happened here or you know what was your i don't know like worst accident or your favorite car like all this type of stuff so i was always asking those type of questions and and uh, obviously being around you know at events like this other people were asking it so you would absorb a lot and, and hear cool stories and we were always trying to get him to like write a book you know and, yeah. and uh, he kind of wrote a little bit of a, a memoir later later in life and uh, it, which is great for our family and especially our, our boys since we have kids but uh, but there were so many so many cool stories sounds like you guys need to get together and, and write the sequel but obviously as you say from a geeky's perspective from a driver perspective you know you how you didn't drive yeah I don't think yeah do you have somewhat different memories because of that or well I mean I maybe don't have that background of when Vesa was competing right. you know and, and I was away in college starting my first company when he was driving you know and it was uh, I was really in that world and I was really excited for Vesa to get that experience and I think Hondo really enjoyed it too to kind of like come back into it and 
you guys were basically running a business around it. You had sponsorship, you had you were running cars, you were doing different series. So it was really cool to, to see that. I think he really enjoyed it and, and kind of to be back in it. My experience with Honda was getting to co-drive a couple of events with him. And we were in a, in a Mark II Escort for 32 days together in a car. <laughs> and I was a 19 year old kid. And uh, you know, we had no idea what would come out of it. We were just like, okay, this is gonna be, you know, an experience for the ages. And luckily I wrote a diary every day, you know, kind of like what we did. And I wanna go back and kind of go through all those memories. But just seeing him operate, even though that was not a world championship rally, but like seeing him drive and the skill that he had, the professionalism, how much he loved doing it, was really cool for me because I was almost like getting to hang out at his job for a month, you know, and see what he was all about. And just a really great experience. We, we had a lot of fun. And actually some of the other guys on the rally were, were people like Steve Blunkvist who's here and Todd Hill was there. You know, there's a lot of like uh, Mark Soloway who helped us yeah. a lot with our, our helmets for the weekend. So it was just a really, for me, it was like kind of a chance to step into, you know, what the rally world was all about and, and meet some of the people that, that he had been around during his career. So so I loved seeing that side of it, you know, and and uh, and learning also. I mean, co-driving is a, a, a crazy skill set I think that a lot of people don't, don't even realize do what it, goes yeah. on so yeah, yeah. so I remember the first thing we did was actually in a WRC car in Ireland we did a, a tarmac hill climb and I had never co-drove before and we're jumping to this top spec car and of course complete fog over the whole hill and dad's just like I I hope you know what you're doing like I'm gonna, I'm gonna need you on this I'm like okay uh, let's go you know and we nailed it which was great but it was definitely gave me a lot of respect for even what the what the non-drivers in the rally team do. And similar to that, uh, 2017 at the Lake Superior yeah. Rally, when, when uh, you invited us over uh, and Hanno drove your, your Escort, I, I was co-driving or co-driving. And, and uh, you know, I think we had the, the notes and stuff. And I think probably, you know, 400 meters into the stage, I couldn't keep up. And I was just like, <laughs> go for it. Like, I can't. Drive I can, what you see. I can't. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and one of the things I appreciated, you know, coming from the driver's side was, I mean, just that experience and that skill. He could read the road fantastic. I think he was 74, 75 at the time. And I was kind of like a little bit nervous. I was like, do you still have it? You know, and then two, <laughs> two kilometers in, he was just, you know, going sideways ever with this high revving escort. And I was, I, I it was, such a great experience. I, I, I must admit, coming up to that event, I'd never been so nervous to, that, you know, cars decide when they're going to behave and not behave. You know, yeah. I, mean, I think we went through that car like, and I, just to put it in context, it was a recreation of mm -hmm. the Eaton Yale car. It wasn't the original yeah. one, but we went through that car several times to, to make sure it kind of worked. But the reaction to people seeing you guys out on that event, it, 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 I still get it. There's a gentleman named Tim Maskers who, who um, oh, wait, no, Tim. Yeah, yeah, Tim, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I told him that I'm going to be here, and he, he, his first his first statement was, "Well, the Michaels are going to be there. Are you going to see them?" I said, "Well, maybe." You know, I couldn't steal the thunder of David's <laughs> yeah. webcast or whatever. You know, but you know, it, it it was just amazing. And I, I think one of my other memories was here at Goodwood with that same car, the Eaton Yale car, and. Um, Again, replica, I'm not saying it's the original one. And I had this amazing experience of being at the top of the hill here, going through the rally stage with Hanu, and immediately afterwards with Bjorn oh, right. yeah, sort of consecutive Arguably times. Arguably probably the top two of Escort. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, you talk about relationships that are built in this industry, industry in this sport. Um, I got out of that car, and I just stood there for probably the best part of 15 minutes whilst they shall I say disgust, some people would define as argue, about what was different in the car to when they drove it in period. Oh, oh, wow. And I can't remember which one of them. One said, no, the cams are different. The other one says the diff's different. The gear ratios are different. And to listen the passion with which they both still had about, yeah. about that, but community. I would imagine in the day, they were obviously very competitive. They were good but, friends. But they yeah, were really good, good, friends. good yeah. friends. And yeah. I, I suppose you grew up with a lot of those friendships, as you said. I mean. Is there that still that Finnish community that... Um... I think there's a little bit. I mean, I think of someone who like, when I was here at Goodwood two years ago after after Hanno passed, I came with my mom and, you know, it was the first time coming without Hanno. Yeah. And, and, you know, there was obviously like a lot of emotions with that. And, and Ari Vatanen really like kind of took me under his wing, you know, and, and he's always been great to me and, and has been such a like supporter. But I think he kind of like, took it to the next level where he was just really wanted to like be there for us and at the I always remember at the ball he brought over a, a Peugeot t-shirt that he had of Hannu's from when they had done a rally in Africa with John Tott co-driving oh, yeah. 
and he had the original shirt and and he wanted to give it to me and brought it and I don't know where he had found that wow. how he had brought it you know but it was just little things like that where it was really like special so I think there's still some of that community but I think there's also a, a lot of the guys are a certain age now yeah. you know where it's like some are still involved others may not be as much yeah, but I, I think back then it was a very tight group and I think they all helped each other which in motorsports today is probably not quite the same so it's really cool. By Monday morning in Mid Wales, Nicola's brilliant driving has taken him 30 seconds ahead of fellow countryman Ari Vatanen. Mikola forges ahead in a most impressive and determined manner. Yeah, when I was first starting um, driving, uh, uh, you know, there was, uh, you know, certain Finnish drivers that had driven at the Finnish championship level, you know, who, like Timo Salonen as well, was, was oh, yes, out helping, yeah. helping out yeah. in the beginning. And uh, yeah, it was great. And, and events like this are just fantastic too. And we did the uh, Olympia Rally Revival last year, you know, and just kind of talking to other drivers about our dad, like Walter was was really great and he shared some oh, great Walter stories. Oh, Walter was amazing. Yeah. Um, so it's been fantastic to do stuff like this to kind of get some of those stories and, and see how they, they felt about and it. And I'll add one more, like Michelle Mouton. I, like, oh, well, I mean, Hanno and her talking, yeah. had a really special yeah. relationship. Yeah. Like he always supported her coming in you know, as a female driver to Audi and, and I think they were really great teammates, but she's also been awesome to us. and. So really we, great to see some of the things that have been done to celebrate her career as well. And, and still very much that. involved, obviously, in the sport and Correct. influential yeah. in the sport. And we were fortunate enough to um, to have Michelle attend our Women in Motorsport event in Seattle yeah. earlier this yeah. year. You know, her discussing, you know, Hanu and the, the time that they, they spent at, at Audi together. You know, obviously a very tight knit community, yeah. but again, competitors. But, you know, she spoke so highly of Hanu and, uh, and, and how he was a great teammate yeah. for them. And the Audi has been proved master of all conditions. The four-wheel drive Quattro is all-conquering with a three-minute lead over the battle behind. Hanu Mikola wins the Mintex Rally and collects maximum points at the start of his championship campaign. There's a story which, I, you know, I... You, you're obviously great historians of the sport. I, I love the sport. I try to be a, a good historian of the sport, but if David Evans was sitting here, he would be, you know, digging in in different directions maybe. But one thing I think I probably heard from David is the story, you know, about Ari and, and Hanu. Hanu was a little disappointed that um, Ari wasn't doing what he could do to keep up the Finnish status in, in, in rallies. And uh, I don't know whether that was it. He had a stern word with him as a, as a younger Ari was coming up. Uh, yeah, the, the, that. the way I remember it or the way that, that I, I, think, I think my father talked about it was it was, it was when Ari was winning the world championship. And, and it was either the clinching rally or close to it. And, and they were both in the, in the escorts. And he was behind Ari in the stage order. And he had seen his... Uh, uh, his marks, you know, the, and yeah. he was sliding all over the place and he could see that like, you know, he was almost going off the road and stuff and he, he actually got upset with him and said like, calm down, calm down, you're gonna, you know, lose it, like you gotta keep it on the road. So, so yeah. I, I thought that was also kind of a, a yeah, very sharing, interesting, and yeah, very, yeah, 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 and, and really coaching mentoring. him, yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah, and saying, you know, yeah. Yeah. You, you got this, you know, so. Yeah. Dawn in the Lake District and the rain has stopped at last. Mikola has dominated the night to extend his lead to five minutes. By the time the survivors reach Harewood Hill Climb, the sun is actually shining and the crowds have flocked in their thousands to watch the cars before they return to York. Just going back again, we're, we're here, you're here with Audi. Um, it was kind of a big decision for Hanu to go with Audi at the time. You know, coming into the sport, you know, he'd been so successful and I'm sure it wasn't the only option he, he had at the time. And did he ever express to you how big a decision that was in his mind, how big a risk it was in his mind? Yeah, I think, you know, Hanu's personality was also, I, I think he kind of downplayed a lot of things. And he, like before we were talking, he was very like logical. But on a few occasions, he did mention that, uh, you know, he didn't really know what he was kind of getting himself involved in. And I think the way he kind of hedged against that risk was that, you know, the first year that they were developing the car, you know, he was like, hey, let's not do any, you know, world championship events. Let's get the car right. And um, he was actually able to do other rallies with other manufacturers that year okay. while he was testing and developing the car. What maybe people don't realize today is just how big of a, a leap that was. You know, first four-wheel drive, four-wheel drive wasn't considered sporty at the time. I mean, they based the, the Quattro on the Volkswagen Iltis, you know, a, a kind of an army a Jeep, really. So, so that was kind of the perception that yeah. you, you can't go rallying with this type of technology. And then also new German team, turbocharging, 
uh, bogey suspension, clever tires, everything was new, you know, so there was definitely a lot of risk there. Uh, he was, you know, he was also a civil engineer by trade, so I think yeah. the fact that he probably, you know, got to develop a lot more and be in from the ground up and, and kind of morph and shape more, that a probably more was very understanding, yeah, probably, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, we know how technical the, the cars are today, but in that day, that was such a big leap that having somebody there who technically understood it as well yeah, was, yeah. was awesome. Now, to fix this. We should leave now. Yes. Well, I, I want to thank you for sharing the time with us today. And I, I would just like to conclude, if I can, um, with saying that, you know, I, I kind of feel that I've eventually made it, you know, in the sense that um, from watching Hanu and Kilda Forest, you know, in escorts, uh, you know, and later in Audis, etc., and just seeing him go through to then building a recreation of his Eaton Yale car, which was recreating what my memory was. And so uh, you cool. know, I didn't have the real thing, but recreating it to 2017 LSPR, which after all the arrangements I unfortunately didn't make um, there. But I, I did, as I say, I met Hanu and, and Bjorn here at Goodwood and subsequently uh, met him a couple of times. But my real graduation, my real fulfillment was buying the s uh, the the s1 e2 um, which of course he 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 didn't compete in a wrc round in it but he won the um the rally before a thousand legs in it yeah um uh, but that car is the genuine car it was his car so i've graduated from building a car that you know looked like the one he had to that one so that to me is making it um, yeah and it's something that I'll, I'll never grow tired of and never you know anticipate selling it might yeah. be bad news for you but <laughs> yeah, i never yeah, anticipate yeah, yeah. selling but i'd have um, to make a bit more money first anyway <laughs> so it's okay but, but i uh, no to me it's uh, it, it's just awesome to be at first of all having met him second having a piece of history that to me key you know in the audi history and in his history and having met you both and having the opportunity to chat here hopefully there's more because it sounds like there's more that you can tell us and um, uh, maybe we'll put a different interviewer in place next time with a even more rally history behind him and, uh, and be able you to quiz it. you thanks for sparing the time so glad it coincided with goodwood and we can do this just on this one i can't think of a better person for it to be with so it's really <laughs> well, special for that. us that it's with I you and, and uh thanks for doing this and thanks no. for always supporting us it's no. really special absolutely and, and if anybody wants to see we put a lot of videos and pictures on mikola rally on instagram Great. from this weekend so we'd love to have folks yeah jump in there and, and uh, interact with us. Okay, great. go to Mikola Rally on Instagram. Next, click on the web. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks, and thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Well, that's what it's like to drive with Mikola.